everyone. Welcome to this edition of Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger. In the show this week, from beetles to hydrogen planes, we'll take a look at smart and clean mobility solutions. Most vehicles developed today follow requirements in terms of carbon footprint, noise, and visual pollution. But beyond the vehicles themselves, entire transportation networks must be rethought. We'll speak to Edward Arkwright, the deputy CEO of Group ADP. And in Test 24, Peter O'Brien went outside of the studio to test for you the Chinese mobility ride-hailing platform, Cao Cao. But first, in South Africa, dwindling tourist dollars due to the pandemic mean the country's national parks have had to cut back on their anti-poaching patrols, leaving wildlife vulnerable to attacks. A new surveillance system using smartphones is hoping to change that. It provides round-the-clock video streams to keep an eye on the elephants, leopards and rhinos that are roaming the savannah. Olivia salazar Winspear has more. Big Brother is watching them. In fact, it's not one all-seeing eye, but 55,000 virtual rangers tracking the wild animals in South Africa's Balulin Nature Reserve. They're using camera phones to do it, a new tool in the fight to protect the wildlife here from poachers. And since anti-poaching patrols have been cut back recently, the threat is ever more pressing to the rhinos, lions, leopards, buffaloes and elephants who live here. We are dealing with poachers that are um, professional people. They've been to the army, they know how to use weapons, and we know nothing about it. And uh, people who can walk long distance, come inside the reserve, kill a rhino in five minutes, they're out. The phones are used to monitor suspicious activity and to keep an eye on the perimeter fences. Handset manufacturers Samsung and tech pioneer Africam have teamed up to develop the necessary technology, which provides eyes and ears for the park, inviting everyone to check in online on a multi-channel website. Fortunately, the human being hasn't evolved to be able to see at night and to see things quickly and, and this kind of thing. You know? And it's what I call human bias. So you'll walk past something that you might not have noticed. I can only cover certain sections of the park at certain times of the day or night. I need technology to fill the gaps. The video streams have already come in useful. Viewers have reported the sound of gunshots to the park authorities, a signal that poachers could be nearby. Indeed, increased poverty and job losses in the region have pushed some to hunt so-called bushmeat, as the pandemic has seen vital revenues from safaris and tourism pulled from South Africa's economy. Now, in the context of environmental transition in air transport and economic recovery, Group ADP, which is one of the leaders in airport infrastructure in the world, has partnered with other French companies to develop an urban air mobility industry branch. It wants to focus on what it believes to be the future, and that is electric vertical takeoff and landing. Well, to know more about it, let's now cross over to Edward Arkwright, the deputy CEO of Group ADP. Hello and welcome. Hello, Julia. So why is it important to have a closer look at urban air mobility or so-called VTOLs? Because uh, this uh, low altitude between, between the ground and 300 meters uh, will be the new frontier for aviation. You will have new uses, uh, new news case, new, uh, new services, maybe for emergency or for business, uh, business uh, guys. And, and so a, a lot of new services are possible. And with this eVTOL, we are able to, to catch this possibility and to offer new possibilities to everybody. Another reason it is that it is the first step of a fully discarboned aviation, fully green, fully quiet. And that's a very good example. You, you, you can see it and you will see it in Paris in two or three years. Now, there's a worldwide race today to develop flying taxis of the future. Volocopter is one of them, Airbus as well. What are the main challenges that lie ahead to make flying taxis a reality in urban areas? We have to think at all the ecosystem. You, you, we need an holistic approach, which is not only a vehicle, and you mentioned Volocopter, our partner, but also other ones are very well advanced in this competition, but also to think at the safety and security questions, at the acceptance of the public opinion, at the noise or no noise 
uh, as it is with uh, uh, velocity as the ground infrastructure operation because uh, you will land you will you will take off but how will it work for you and for me as a customer so a lot of questions and you don't have to think at, at it uh, step by step but globally at the same time and we will make a, a real experimentation on all these aspects in Paris in, in June uh, in an airfield which is located very close to Paris and in order to, uh, to check everything and to be ready for 2024. Now, precisely, Groupe ADP has also partnered with the Paris region to launch an initiative called Reinvent Air Mobility. And the idea is to be ready to showcase this during the 2024 Olympic Games here in Paris. Yes, of course, because all the world will uh, have a look on Paris for this Olympic and Paralympic Games. So it is a very great opportunity not only to make an experimentation or another more flight, but to make a kind of a pre-commercial service for a lot of, a lot of people, maybe thousands of, of people. We, we will open two or three routes, a very interesting and very amazing one. And in order to be at this rendezvous with the Paris region, of course, but also uh, with uh, uh, civil aviation authorities and, and, and with the support of all the, the authorities and regulation, we have to work uh, right now. And so uh, we are very, very confident in our ability to be uh, ready for 2024 and to make uh, Paris as the first and the well, the best positioned uh, city in Europe on uh, air, you, uh, urban mobility. Edward Arkwright, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you, Julia. Now from flying cars, let's go back to just regular flying planes, except this time powered by hydrogen, not kerosene. In a little as five years, you could be on a short haul flight on one of them. Well, to talk more about it, let's now turn to our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Hi, Julia. So British Airways hopes that the technology could actually help us reach zero emissions on short haul routes by 2025. Yeah, that's right. BA has actually invested in Zero Avia, which is a startup that managed to do something rather special back in September. Now, it looks like a normal six seater having a fly around, but actually it's what's on the inside of this small plane that matters. It was the world's first hydrogen powered commercial grade flight. And by 2026, Zero Avia has said that they'll be able to have a 50 plus seater commercial jet up in the skies. Now, how come this is seen as the future of aviation? Yeah, so before the pandemic, aviation accounted for about 2.5% of global emissions. So if we can cut that pollution down, it would really help. Now, batteries are useful for trucks and cars, but they're generally too heavy to use in aircraft, which is why we turned to hydrogen. Because hydrogen, when it's burned, emits only water and not uh, greenhouse gases. Now, the tricky thing is storing it, right? Because Either it's in liquid form, in which case it has to be kept very, very cold, or it's kept in a gas form, which means that it has to be highly pressurized because of its low energy density. But that's not the only problem. The biggest caveat of all is that hydrogen fuel nowadays is, is produced in an almost always a non-renewable way. So Zero Avia is of course saying that their hydrogen comes from a renewable source, but making this more widespread in the industry as a whole is going to be a lot more difficult. I'm sure you're uh, very desperate to tell us how a hydrogen fuel cell actually works. Yeah, that's right. So we actually already see them all the time nowadays in, in all sorts of transport, things like uh, um, buses, public buses, satellites and submarines. Um, but, and they work much like a battery, in fact. So in its simplest form, hydrogen actually enters the cell and reacts with a catalyst, which splits it into protons and electrons. And from this point on, the electrons then flow out of the cell, creating an electric current, and the protons react with oxygen in the air to make water. Well, thank you very much for that, Peter. We're going to stay with you because for Test24, you're taking us outside of the studio. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to talk about one of the largest car makers you might never have heard of. It's called Geely, and they own Volvo and have also invested in um, Volocopter, that German flying taxi startup that you mentioned. Now, they're also dipping their toes into hybrid and electric ride hailing. And I had a ride in one of their taxis and it looks suspiciously familiar. There are still no tourists here for now, and one company has been waiting for over a year for them to come back, ever since it first set up in Paris before the start of the first lockdown. It's the Chinese ride hailing app, Chow Chow. Let me order one of their rather special cabs. 
Now, the first thing you notice is it looks rather like a London black cab. Well, that's because it is. The Chinese car maker Gili actually bought the London taxi company, which is now LEVC, the London Electric Vehicle Company, and they've repurposed one of their hybrid models to make it accessible for ride hailing in Europe. And luckily enough, we've got Verushka Beka in here, who works at Taotao. So Taotao already has a presence in China, and obviously coming over to Paris, there's a fierce competition around ride hailing. So why did you pick Paris? Uh, for three simple reasons. The first one is that uh, Paris is a European capital in terms of economics. The second one is that it's first destination for tourism. And although it is not the best period at the time, it will be, com it will be coming back and we know that. And the third one is more of a hard thing is our CEO. He's actually, uh, I've been living in France since 2004 and he absolutely loves Paris. Thank you very much, Varushka. I'm now going to take a look at the tech inside. So inside it's very spacious, you've got enough room for six people and they're obviously going for the tourism market here because not only can you rent this out for short trips but you can actually charter it for four to eight hours as well for a sort of sightseeing tour of the city. That's why this glass roof is rather good as well. Now they're also after the business markets, so this is good for people who are busy with laptops because it's got USB ports, it's got a power socket and they'll soon all have Wi-Fi. Now between me and the driver, there is this glass panel, which I find rather impersonal, but I suppose it's good at the time of coronavirus. Um, now, if I want to talk to the driver, all I have to do is press this button here. C'est bon, on peut y aller. Ok, let's go. So there you have it. That's Tao Tao Mobility, the first purely Chinese entry into ride hailing in Europe. We're now coming to the end of this show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you soon here on France 24.